known as the Venice of Portugal. But why? Aveiro has a little over 80,000 people and it is commonly compared to Venice. Yes, it has the canals and the narrow boats, but it's kind of a small town. It's not super big, so does it have a lot to offer? It does have its own flair, so let's take a look why it's not really Venice. Aveiro is located about an hour south of Porto and an hour northwest of Coimbra. It's in the central region of Portugal and it's second by population behind Coimbra. It's very well connected by train and while it's not right on the Atlantic coast, it is very close. The different waterways throughout the town give the same feel of Venice, hence the nickname, but that's kind of the only thing that relates to Venice. It's smaller than Venice, but you could argue the weather is nicer because it doesn't get as cold in the winters and as hot in the summers. It does rain a bit more though, and it can get windy. But enough about the comparison for now. We'll get to that a little later. Let's break down the weather a little further. The winters are generally in the 40s and 50s, so it doesn't get super cold. It does get rainy and windy here though. The summers are pleasant, staying mainly in the 60s and 70s because of the Mediterranean climate. For a long part of its history, Aveiro was an important economic link in the production of salt. Not just for all of Portugal, but as an export too. This is still evident today, which we'll get to. Commercial shipping is also an industry that we'll talk about when we get into the topic of jobs. There's a mix of historical and modern architecture. A very university is right down in the center area. While the town is quite walkable and very flat, you might want a car to get to other parts around Aveiro. You do have local buses though and people cycle. Earlier I mentioned salt. While times have changed significantly from lagoons producing mass amounts of salt, you do still see artisanal salt production to keep the city's history alive. There are still salt pans and pyramids in the area you can visit, and you have salt as something important to Aveiro, but is there anything else it offers? Of course, you also have the famous Obschmolsch. This is a local delicacy and traditional treat that has been traced back to the nuns living in convents. Apparently they used the egg whites to clean their clothes and they baked with the egg yolks because they didn't want to waste and they could earn a little extra money for the convent. Mmm, this sounds familiar, doesn't it? Pastel donata? It sure does. The monks were doing the same thing, which is how the pastel donata was born. I think we can see why Portugal has many egg-based pastries because of this practice. Yeah, very good pastries. But back to Aveiro, the nuns eventually taught other women how to make ovos moles and it became iconic to the town. The egg yolk and sugar mixture is put inside a rice paper or wheat flour casing, kind of like a communion wafer, and shaped into anything nautical like a shell. There are chocolate variations too. Now remember this is traditional to the town, so you can definitely find some other great pastries here as well. There has to be something else to eat here though, right? It's along the water, so lots of traditional dishes that are based off of that. They have a few great cod and seafood dishes to try. Well, now that we're all hungry, let's talk a little bit about the cost of things to see just how much we need to budget for things like those overschmolish. A meal at an inexpensive restaurant will cost you around eight euros. Hello, menu of the day. Go for a little fancier and you're gonna spend around 30 euros for a meal for two at a mid-scale location. Beer and coffee will cost you a couple of euros each. Pop into the grocery store and spend around one euro for a liter of milk. A dozen eggs will be about two euros. You can buy a kg of apples or bananas for under two euros each. Items like cheeses and meats will be a little higher than this, but it's worth looking for a local to purchase these from. They are, of course, available at the larger grocery store chains as well. What about rents though? A one bedroom apartment centrally located will be around 700 euros per month and drops to five to 600 euros or so when you move further out of the city center. A three bedroom apartment in the city center will be around 900 euros and then closer to 800 euros if you move a bit out. Budget around 100 euros for your monthly utilities. Obviously there are a lot of factors when considering renting, like where it's located, if it has been renovated, what amenities it includes, what's actually available and more. So just take that into consideration. A realistic monthly budget to consider for housing and general cost of living is around 2,500 euros for a couple to live comfortably. Of course, everyone is different with lifestyles, so this is just a reference. If you're looking to buy, right now there seems to be more options available compared to renting. There's a lot of construction going on, so you can get in early with a new build, but something quite small like a studio or T1, around 30 to 50 meters squared will be at least 150,000 euros, but upwards of 200,000 for this size or something less than 100 meters squared. Yeah, I love their new construction. 
You can find a T2 or T3 around 100 square meters for around 200,000 euros, but check the location and if it needs renovation. A safer budget is at least a quarter million euros, but you can spend a lot more than that for different sizes, locations, and other desirable amenities. So just check what's currently available if you want to buy. Tourism is a great industry to get into in Aveiro if you're looking for work. There are port services as well. There are also a variety of service jobs. It's a great place for digital nomads or to retire to. While Aveiro is small compared to other Portuguese cities, it's quite vibrant. Having a large university here probably helps with that. There are a few options for hospitals including public and private and open 24-7. For example, Hospital de Luz has 24-hour urgent care. You also have a variety of clinics. There are a few playgrounds strategically placed in great areas and lots of green space for kids to do activities or for you to relax. From statues to canals to assault history and yummy pastries. Not quite Venice, but definitely its own unique town. But would Josh and I live here? All right, we're here in Aveiro. What do you think? I really like it. I think that it's super walkable and not just the downtown area. I think a lot of people come here maybe by train or something and they stay along that main canal, which is beautiful. Lots of things to do there. But I would really recommend that you venture away from that area, walk a little bit and see just really what it has to offer and what living here would actually feel like. Because that area is great, touristy, lots of great restaurants and everything, but maybe you wouldn't want to live right down there. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think if we're sticking kind of towards the theme of tourism, I think if you come here for a day or maybe two days, it could be misleading to what life could be like here. Sure. I think that there are a ton of amenities here for daily living, and that's really appealing. I mean, let's be honest. Like, you want to move to a place that has all the amenities, and I think if you're looking for something that is a smaller city and has a smaller city feel, then it's going to tick all the boxes. I mean, we're sitting right across from Teatro Alvarez, so you know you have a live theater where you can check out plays or some of the other things that they have going on there, some of the other live events they have going on there. You have a terrible soccer team, so that's probably the downside uh, to the live stuff they've got going on. But no, I mean, they have other things. They've got a movie theater, they've got shopping malls, they have churches that the, the bells. bells go off. <laughs> Um, there's tons of stuff to do here. I'm just blanking on what to do apart from the canal. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are a lot of things to do here and I think that it is quite livable. Um, I think that something that shocks me a bit is when you do walk around, you see a lot of housing. There are a lot of apartment complexes and it's all different types from small ones that might be older to massive new builds that look super modern and everything you can think of in between. So there really is a lot of housing. and. What I like about that too is generally downstairs, like the first level is commercial space. So mm. you can live in a place and you can have like your local cafe that you go to on a daily basis, like right in your building practically. You've got like a lot of places to get your hair cut and go have a drink. There's loads of restaurants around. So it is really livable feeling, I think. Yeah, talking about livability, let's talk about the car culture a little bit. Oh, yeah. So as Kaylee said earlier, it's super walkable and that's great. However, there's also a lot of parking for cars. And I think that people have taken advantage of that, not in a bad way, but they have cars. So a lot of people tend to have cars while they're here, whether you're one of those people that wants to have a car or not, people do have cars and there's ample parking for that. The great thing is, is you don't need a car in the city, but if you wanna have a car to get out of the city, to get to some other towns or cities nearby, you have a place to park that puppy. And, uh, and be able to get out and do some things. And not like parallel parking, right? There's like parking lots, a yeah. lot of places. Obviously there's garages as well that go with the apartments, but there's parking lots. So it's really diverse. You could have your option, like you could have your choice here of what you wanted to do. You have options, which is great. Yeah, it's absolutely great. It's <laughs> absolutely great. So I guess we've come to that time where I need to ask you the question, would you expat that? So that means would you want to live in Aveiro for a medium, short to medium term? let's say six months to five years. Right, yeah. I mean, I think the way we've been talking about it, it's pretty evident that yes, I would expat Aveiro, and you? Absolutely, I would expat Aveiro. Uh, we're big fans of Porto, we live in Porto, that's our, our place. If Porto didn't exist, Aveiro would be super high up on my list, as well as Viana do Castelo. I like the feel of the north, and uh, Aveiro is you know, about an hour south of Porto, but still, a lot of nice people, Cuisine here is good. 
not super into Obushmolsch, um, but it's it is a thing you is. have to try, right? No, I think that it's actually for the size, it's quite diverse and there is a lot to do and it could lend to a lot of different lifestyles as well, which is nice. I would say if you're looking for something that's like super hot or you don't really like the cold, then it might not be for you because it is on the water. So it gets a little cool and windy, windy. during the winter. Um, it's not awful though, obviously a little rainy too. It's not awful though. So for us, like that doesn't bother us during the winter. Um, tourism definitely picks up in the summer because it's a beautiful place to be. I mean, you know, the Venice of Portugal, which I think that there's not really any comparison. Obviously the canals and the, and the boats and such look the same, but Aveiro has its own thing going on and it's really nice. Yeah, its own thing is a very, very good thing. You will hit pockets where it feels like, like maybe you're in a, like a British suburb yeah like you're you're in a you're in a, a london suburb for example with the types of housing there is and the fact that it's a bit more open certainly more open than downtown porto downtown lisbon sure, yeah. i mean it's it's great yeah it's its, it's own place so no comparison no, i don't think yeah no comparison but if you do want to compare and check out a place like porto or viana do castello these two playlists are for you now Let's get moving. Bye. Bye.